Hello everybody. I uh, was trolling the internet today and uh, it's about 11.30 at night right now so I had to do a, um, some last minute searching before I close it down for the night but I, uh, since I'm studying for the CCIE I wanted to get some labs that I could do in GNS3 that um, would take me beyond what they what they show you in like uh, Internet Work Expert, CBT Nuggets, Train Signal, and all those type of guys. Now I've only done the labs in, in INE and CBT Nuggets. I haven't done the ones in um, for for uh, Train Signal. But what I wanted to show you was this website. It's called FreeCCNPLab.com, and I registered just for the heck of it. I figured you know it's free. But what this guy did is they took a whole bunch of troubleshoot labs. And there's, I don't know how many there are, I haven't even counted them yet. But it does give you a lot of ads because it's a free site. Um, but it gives you a whole bunch of labs. So like basic OSPF in a single area, which is really easy to set up. Um, multi, uh, probably multi-area OSPF, and uh, that's really easy to set up. You know, and then it gets into some EIGRP troubleshooting, figure out why it's not working. And... You know, this is right up my alley as to what I'm looking for. You know, and then they have the switching section to where you can do switching as well. And it'll teach you, you know, uh, either channel and um, uh, VLANs and v, uh, VLAN trunking protocol, dynamic trunking protocol, and um, spanning tree and stuff like that. And then they have. Uh, um, like I said, there is a lot of. I think that's it for the switch. There really isn't a whole lot to switch, and then they do VPN, because as a CCNP, you should be able to configure a VPN. And they only have one up here, which is a GRE tunnel, and this one's going to be kind of tough. If you've never done a tunnel, that one's going to that one's going to kick your butt. But um, basically, why I recorded this was so that people could see what you could do. Now. Um, there's a lot of different places out there that'll do, um, click on the routing. Um, just gotta think about it. Oh, that might be, uh, okay. But basically what I was going through, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Now, there is a thing, just outside of my window, there's a thing called, um, uh, older labs. And you can't really see it unless I was to like squeeze this up here. Uh, let me bring this up just a little bit. And like I said, you're gonna see a lot of a lot of ads. Now if you see older entries, and let me drag this to this and fill it in just real quick, because then you guys can see what's going on. But it's really cool because it gives you the option of. Um, uh, let me go to the older entries. Seeing how everything is put together. Now, the one thing I like about it is I see there's. Let me go one farther. I think it's this one right here, where it's the final, which is what you could do if you were to combine all of it together. And hopefully, it's gonna pull it up. Okay, I think this is it right here. The final assessment. And they can they in the in the bottom here um, when you open it up, um, it get, there's a uh, a file with all of the information you're supposed to do, and you're supposed to be able to configure EIGRP, OSPF, RIP, BGP, and then I I see some switching here at the bottom, and with GNS3 you're able to link your live uh, equipment to GNS3, so that's what I'll probably end up doing, but this is cool because. It'll actually give somebody like me that's looking for advanced um, uh, uh, I'm looking for the CCI level understanding on things and how to be able to troubleshoot stuff. So being able to do something like this is right up my alley. You know, if you really want to know how to do something and you have GNS3, because I don't know any other thing you could use besides GNS3 to do this with. Um, I was actually just working on some OSPF over NBMA and uh, I got about 10 minutes into the video trying to keep up with the the instructor and 
he goes so fast that I have to pause the video, make sure I can keep up the commands because he's in there. Everything's already working. Theoretically, all he's doing is turning OSPF on and then setting the routes up and figuring out why they won't work. That's all he's basically doing. But um, when I saw this, I was like, how do I... Um, now, GNS3 is right here. If you click on that, it'll take you to GNS3's website. GNS3 is free. And then if you come over here, I use IANI. IANI is great. They're, it's all day long, these guys. If I could go, tr if I could go, um, spend their six thousand dollars that they want for a two-week boot camp, I'd be there tomorrow. I mean, that's how bad I wanna to get this stuff. And the nice thing about this is every lab, from what I've seen, I've only clicked on a handful of them. Uh, let me scroll down here to the bottom. Um, I don't know where. It actually shows you how. Um, yeah, I think it's the algorithm does its thing. There is a um, a download for it, and you can download. I think it's the config, so it's like the initial scripts, and you plug them in, and then you have to you have to figure out why it's not working. So this is a, a T shoot lab, which would be perfect for the T shoot exam. So when you're configuring, EIGRP works very well and very clean over. Um, uh, OS or uh, frame relay. So it's just a matter of getting frame relay to work to where you can map and ping. As soon as you have your map statements in and you can ping, it's just a matter of turning EIGRP on and advertising those same routes into EIGRP, and then you'll be able to route EIGRP over at frame relay. It's really simple. But the nice thing about it is, you know, you have the option of it's basic T shoot, so. Um, what I'll do is once I'm settled down with school, because I have, I don't even know, probably, um, I have five classes, and I just turned in my second assignment for my Linux class, so it'll probably be another, probably a month before I get here, because I have to go back through the CCMP videos, and uh, do the route, and do, make sure I can do everything in route. As long as you can do everything in route, and then you go back through and you have to configure stuff, the config is there. So I'm just basically going back for a refresher course, and then I'll do the switch because I have the three or I have the four switches here at home. I'll go through the switching section and I'll do that, you know, live here at home because I have it already set up. It's just a matter of going through and making sure I can configure everything, and I, I pretty much can. There's only a few things that I don't know how to do. Um, I can't do. Uh, private VLANs because it doesn't support it. But what I was saying about doing was buying a rack rental and going on and configuring it and trying that out. But that's basically what I wanted to cover. Um, it's a short video, just kind of giving these guys a, a shout out to um, what they do and how they do it and stuff like that. So I don't know who any of these guys are. I'm actually just reading this as, as you are. Um, so if you give me one second, I'll be right back. I was uh, going through his resources section real quick, and uh, he's got a couple up here that are not too bad. Um, uh, SemSim. Um, I've never played with this one. Um, simulators are okay. I'm not a big person for simulators. Uh, the Packet Tracer is one, but it's the probably the best one I've seen. Boson NetSim. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, they have a. Uh, uh, it's very. Uh, actually, I have it on my computer. That's why I'm. I'm kind of against it because it doesn't. It's very concentric to lab specific, and some of the commands are changed around. So, um, for as much money as they charge for you to download their simulator, it's almost. As, it's almost better just to go out and buy a cheap Cisco router that you can console on eBay like an 800 series or something cheap you know like a, an old 1700 series with maybe an older iOS just to get familiar with the operating system and be able to throw some you know NAT and some ACLs and some routing protocols and stuff like that I wouldn't recommend doing this one um, uh, I'm never dealt with this guy actually I have dealt with this guy and I didn't like it 
This guy, I think you had to pay for. Um, let's see, tech exams. I've been to this one. This isn't too bad. Um, now, but see, I've been to these sites right here. I've been to MCM, MC, MCSE. Um, uh, I'll have to check these guys out, but these are just something for you guys to check out. And you know, if you if you see where it says free CCMP questions, you might have to sign up. Um, just as a heads up, there might be some registration involved. Um, but one thing I want to point out for the CCNA people out there, do not look at this. Or, I'm sorry, absolutely look at this. 64801, they retired that exam a long time ago. The current CCNA exam is 64802. So if you are trying to study for it, I mean, some of it's going to be, uh, it's going to tie in because probably IGRP, um, so it's probably going to be in there. And, uh, it, it, older technologies that aren't even used anymore, like uh, IPX, XPX, and some Novell stuff. But make sure you're paying attention to the exam numbers you're throwing out there. So some of this stuff is old. Um, just be careful what you're doing. I mean, it says CCNA study guide, but you really need to review the material. 640, 607. God, that thing's like 12 years old. Um, the reason I know that is because the guy I work with, he's got a 640, 607 um, book at work, and I think the publication date is like 2000 or 2001. It's some ridiculously old book. But you can go through and go to freeccmplab.com and check out the resources and um, check it out. Uh, one thing I want to clarify, right here is the cbtnuggets.com. Um, that's got to be old. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to click on that and go to some other now it loaded and yeah that's what I thought um, what you can do is which actually I'm, I'm actually happy I did that because what you can do um, routergod.com Humphrey Chung is good I like him um, but this guy right here if you hear me refer to the 24 hour cram nugget I did this right before I took my CCNA exam and it's actually good because it's $24 for 24 hours so it costs you 24 bucks for 24 hours worth of, you know, it's free access to their entire library. So, um, and you get access to the um, exam prep. So you can either go online and pay for a book and have practice questions, or you can try to get up-to-date information. Um, CC, uh, Cisco exams for the CCNA, both of them, they're 150 bucks a piece. The CCNA exam as a whole is 300 so they haven't updated their exams in a while, so if you haven't done it in, in the last couple of months, I would recommend getting in there and getting it done. I have to wait until January 8th, which I think is, what is that, uh, two and a half weeks. It's not the, the next Friday, but the Friday after that. I have to wait two and a half and three and a half weeks before my financial aid kicks in, before I can actually... Um, uh, why'd I do that? Be careful what you click on, people. Um, see, then it won't even let me go back, but, um, but yeah, this is basically the, the resources section of it. Um, be careful where you go, because some of this stuff might not actually be working. So, just be careful where you go. Um, I've only checked out a couple of these sites, because from poking around, seeing what's out there. Um, if you want a completely free um, CCNA resource, uh, yeah, it's gonna DNS dub 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 dot ine. I will take you to the member section of Internet Work Expert, and. There is a reason why it doesn't save the information. Mm, excuse me. And you click on the free, C free CCNA streaming. Click on that. And then it takes you to their CCNA course. Now I've been registered here for a while now. Probably uh, six months or so. And this is the introduction. I think I've shown you guys as well.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the, uh, the CCNA Bootcamp. Uh, my name is Brian McGann, and I'm going to be the instructor for uh, this class. A little bit about myself, uh, I'm from Chicago, and I've been in networking for uh, about 15 years now. And uh, I originally started in uh, Microsoft networking, doing like uh, just desktop support and PC support, uh, and then I got into like uh, Windows Server type stuff. Went through the uh, the MC MCSC in NT4, which is quite a while now, probably 15 years. Um, and then eventually that led me into uh, CCNA and CCNP. So uh, it, it definitely was a good uh, basis for the the Cisco stuff that I've been into since then. Uh, we'll talk about that today. What are you know the the expectations of uh, the the level of technologies that we're going to be going through with CCNA? and uh, some of the, the prerequisites and just recommendations on uh, different resources you can use and stuff like that. Uh, but at least for me personally, I thought C uh, MCSE was a great uh, prereq for this because it went over just a lot of general networking theory. And especially like from the application level, what are we really trying to do in the first place with the, uh, with the network? Uh, from there, I got um, CCIE in routing and switching, service provider, and uh, security. Uh, as, and for any questions that you guys have, my address is there. Uh, it's bmcgann at ine.com. I'll put this up on the whiteboard uh, later as well. So any questions you have offline during the week or after class, you guys feel free uh, to contact me. I'm more than happy to help you guys out with anything. That is absolutely um, true. The only one thing I do want to mention is that the, uh, the actual CCNA exam, or essentially any of the Cisco exams, there's basically an agreement that you sign that just says, don't tell people what the actual questions are. So we're not going to talk about what are the actual questions on the exam, but we'll talk about all the technologies that are within uh, the scope. So pretty much anything is fair game. Feel free to ask me anything you want, you know, whether we're uh, I'm doing the lectures or whether we're working on lab time. I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer questions. That's what I'm here for. Um, now, along with that class participation. OK, I'm going to pause the video there uh, for him. But he is absolutely true. Um, the uh Course files. Oh, you can do the slides for everything. Interesting bookmarks. I've never actually poked around in here. Hey, what do you know? It gives every little thing he says. That is gonna. That's a little, uh, a little overkill for me. But anywho, um, that's for that one. But then I mean, you can download the slides and review them later. Um, like WANs, um, actually it's just, <laughs> I just downloaded them, um, but anywho, uh, he describes the NDA that Cisco has in place, the NDA, the non um, uh, non-disclosure agreement, uh, when you go to take a, a Cisco exam, you go in and you, first thing you do before you even start the survey, uh, or not the survey, the tutorial, is, don't tell people what you saw on the exam. It's the um, now there are people that do that. They go in, they take the exam, they basically they try to memorize all the questions and the answers that were given, and take it back and dump on. They come in and say, okay, question one was something about was this about OSPF and how to configure it on this, and then these are the answers, you know, and then they have like a CCIE come in and you know answer them, you know, or whatever the case may be. But um, the course I have passed this exam right here, 640-822 ICND-1, the CSENT, that gives you the CSENT certification, passing the 640-816 and the 640-822 gives you the CCNA certification. Passing just this gives you nothing. Okay, passing this and this gives you this, the CCNA. Just so you guys are clear, um, and actually, let me jump over to Cisco's website um, real quick. Actually, I mean, it gets kind of funky when um, training and events. Try to Cisco certifications, and can I get the? Um, actually, probably just be better if I went on uh, CCNA. Oh, it's not giving me the um, 
the pyramid that I want. Home. Oh, uh, let's go training and events, and let's go. C C sent. Is that? There we go. Here's what I was looking for. Um, this is right. Basically, this is how I was uh, shown how Cisco exams work. Actually, I'm gonna discard that. Um, I have this certification right here. This is what I have. I'm studying for this one right here. Obviously, in the class that I'm in with you guys, that's what I'm studying for. Um, my next goal will be the CCMP, and then after that, it is the CCIE. Now, as you can see, um, uh, the entry level is easiest to get because then you know it's the bottom of the pyramid. It's foundation level topics: what's a router, what's a switch, how does the network work, what are the steps that it goes through to get from point A to point B, that type of stuff. It's basic foundation stuff. If you are struggling with CSENT level of material, you're not getting Cisco or whatever, I recommend the Network Plus from CompTIA. It's the equivalency. Um, where Network Plus, it's more, it's vendor neutral. They don't go into Juniper. They don't go to Cisco, D-Link, or any other uh, vendors out there. They stick to um, just core concepts. What's a router? What's a switch? That type of stuff. There's, um, uh, there's no good free training for that that I'm aware of. Oh, you know what? Check out Professor Messer on YouTube. Um, just Google Professor Messer and check that out. That'll probably be something you guys will want to check out if you're struggling with stuff and you want to understand how stuff works. But um, uh, I don't have the Network Plus certification, but I plan on taking it uh, sometime in the future. But um, the entry level right here, this is what I have. I'm working on the associate level. Now, um, if you go to the web link section, you'll see that I'm working on the CCIE certification, that's where I want to be. Now, you see the architect above that? The architect, there's some prerequisites for that one, and I don't know what they are, but they're pretty steep, and if it's some sort of panel exam where you get in front of like a, it's kind of like a panel interview where you go in and people ask you a bunch of questions on things, and the architect, it's not a configuration lab, to my understanding. It's a, you go in there and you have to um, build a network based around uh, certain requirements and other things I, I've never really had a good no one's ever really discussed um, the guidelines and the parameters of the architect level exam I, I think there's eight people certified as architects as CCAR um, but I've never I think if you click up here um, ah. If you highlight this, it does, yeah, it's the architect is right here. Um, and then you get specialist stuff, but um, the associates where I'm trying to get to, and that's what the CCNA class everybody's in is going to do, and then professional is above that. There's one exam to get the um, the entry, the CSENT, and then once you've got the CSENT, you pass the other, the 64816, that gives you the associate. So passing two exams get you this guy. And then you take um, you go into the CCMP route, switch and T shoot are the three exams you need to pass in order to get the, the professional level or the CCNP, which is this guy. Once you pass those three exams, they give you the CCMP certification. Then um, you add on to your CCMP knowledge, you learn more about BGP, multicast, quality of service and then MPLS and some more in-depth stuff on some services and then you can take the CCIE written exam which is like a hundred hundred questions I think is the average and you get two hours to do them in so it's about a minute and a half per question or so um, you get uh, you go in you take the exam the written exam and you get a uh, you pass it and then you qualify to take the lab exam once you take in once you take in the written exam, you have 18 months to make your first attempt at the lab. Once you've taken the written, uh, you the written is good for three years, but you have 18 months to make your first attempt at the lab. The lab is $1,500. The written exam is $350. So you take the written exam, then you study your butt off for however long it takes you to get where you think you're ready for the the two hour troubleshoot lab and the six hour configuration and then you go in and you attempt the lab. The lab is eight hours. It's a one day lab. You don't get to go to a Pearson View location like all the other ones. 
from the written down, you have to go to Cisco directly. You have to fly out to San Jose, California, or RTP, North Carolina, which I think is not too far from, where is that, uh, Raleigh or somewhere out there. But you go out to uh, either North Carolina or San Jose, are the only two locations I'm familiar with in the U.S. You fly out there, you after you pay the 1500 bucks and you schedule the exam, once you Pay, uh, schedule the exam and you fly out there, you know, not including expenses to fly or drive, hotel, food, and if you bring your wife and kids or your husband and the kids or whatever the case may be, um, you may attempt the lab. Some people pass the first time, most people don't. The average right now, according to Cisco, is there, it's, you average 2.7 attempts before you pass the lab. That's not every time, but the majority of them are. The lab is extremely difficult. Um, typically, it takes a person sometimes a year to get from the time that they pass their CCIE written, which might take you two years to get to that point. You know, from the time you where you walk into Cisco to the time you pass a CCIE written, and then another year on top of that to study for the lab. So it could be take you three, th four, or five years. Theoretically, what they say is no network professional sh should, should attempt the CCIE lab with less than 10 years of networking experience. Because then what that does, when you pass the CCIE lab, that basically validates you as a networking expert. You know, you know everything about um, networking at, go away, um, the expert level in that track. Now, let me uh, show you something real quick. There are, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different CCIE exams. Just like there are eight CCNA exams. Just like there are eight CCMP exam or uh, certifications. Um, I know security is one exam. Or I'm sorry, if you go to the CCNA, it's uh, security is one exam. Data center is two, storage is one, service provider for both is two, voice is one, wireless is one. Because there's really not that much in wireless you have to really have to worry about. But CCNA is the prerequisite. So I'll do a comparison chart real quick. Um, like I said, one to three years, you're going to want to know switches, router, Cisco, iOS, LAN, WAN, wireless, and LAN. Number of exams, one. Theoretically, it's two if you go the two exam route, but um, you are going to um, be a network engineer, systems engineer, network support specialist, or something to that effect. Switching routers, iOS, LAN, WAN, wireless, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, IPv6, layer 2, layer 3, advanced IP addressing. When they say layer 2 and layer 3, they're referring to switching. Advanced IP addressing and routing configuration and secure routing solutions. Uh, you have to have the CCNA in order to take the CCNP certification. Now, the CCIE. Seven years plus senior network engineer, you need to know a whole lot about a lot. Router switches, uh, LANs, wireless, WANs, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, MPLS, Banditry, QoS, Multicast. These are um, services. Um, security. Uh, when they refer to MPLS, they're referring to uh, MPLS Layer 3 VPNs, and then they go into, you know, the specialist exams, like field specialist, and if, um, you can go into these. Um, I've never seen, with, I've never seen these before, so that's a new one on me. Uh, field specialist. Oh, I see what that one's for. This is more of your, um, well, I don't know. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure what that, I mean, I know what they're, they're asking for. They want you to be good with BGP, MPLS, QoS, high availability, um, maybe ACE load balancers with high availability. Um, this is more of your consultant would be in this field. Um. They say consultant, network consultant here, but theoretically you want to be a CCIE to be a consultant, and realistically. Um, 
solution specialist. Identify custom requirements to create a network solution. Oh. See, I didn't even see that. Um, these are all Cisco. Um, hmm. See, this is more of a DA, DP, DE certification. Um, where you go in and you see what they need and you can help set it up. But uh, that's basically, that covers it. You know, and just to give you a clue as to what you need to get where you need to be. I mean, you're going to add, you're going to be pretty good at switching, or you're going to be good at get pretty good at Cisco when you take the CCNA and pass it. But um, you're still going to be far from this. Now I'm, uh, I'd say I'm, I'm a solid CCMP. Um, there are some things I don't know how to do yet, like policy routing that I'm not real strong with. Um, foundationally with, with understanding, I'm a solid CCMP. Um, I can explain a lot of topics and I'm going back through this level stuff right now. Um, I'm almost done with all the labs. Um, Matter of fact, I think I have like two or three more to go, and I'm done with the entire semester with labs already. But um, as a kicker, you do not have to have a CCNA or CCNP to take the CCIE. There is no prerequisite. Um, why? Well, um, let me show you. Prerequisites. There are no formal prerequisites for the CCIE. Why is that? Because the CCIE was Cisco's original certification before they came out with the NP, the NA, or any of the other certifications they came out with. So in order for you to um, take and pass the CCIE written and then qualify for the lab, you need to have at least the CCNP's level, solid level of understanding. Be able to get on the router, get on the iOS, and configure whatever you need to configure without having to think about it. You might have to go, what was that command again? Stuff like that, but you're not going to, you're not going to be a CCNA walking into the CCIE lab. You're going to get hosed. The, the amount of information you need to know is, you know, CCIE lab exam within 18 months of passing the written, um, if you do not pass the lab within three years of passing the written, you must retake the written exam. So, like I said, when you pass the written exam, it's good for three years. So you can take that exam and throw it on your resume and be like, I've passed the CCI written. That is something you can go on there and say. Because if you pass the written exam, that qualifies you as a CCMP. It doesn't give you the CCMP, but it validates your understanding to be, well, actually beyond the CCMP. Um, but... That is all I have to say about that. I just wanted to give you guys an overview on what I what I found and something you guys could look at for, you know, moving forward. Um, CCNA Labs, everything that you guys have done up to and including in the CCNA 3 and 4, if you've, um, uh, if you take past the CCNA 3 and 4, um, go take the lab or go take the exam. Definitely do it because... You know, it's uh, um, something I would definitely do. You know, I'm definitely going to take the CCNA, and now that I've got the higher paying job and so I got some money coming in the next couple of months, I'm going to go take the CCNP and, uh, you know, hopefully get paid more money. I make about 40000 a year right now as a, as a network support specialist. Um, pretty good money out of the gate for, you know, still being in school and only having a basic certification. But my knowledge that I have takes me beyond that. I'm able to troubleshoot more advanced things. So will you. Don't think that I'm any better than any of y'all because I'm not. I'm just, I've gone beyond and studied the more difficult topics. Um, and you guys could too. You know, I just went online and I'm, uh, I'll put it to you like this. Google has become a very good friend of mine and anything that, you can pay for you can probably find online for free somewhere um, so the internet is full of resources so without actually taking you by the hand and showing you how I've gotten my information 
be resourceful as you can and if you have to spend money spend money but um, if you find resources for free online be careful on how and try to validate how up-to-date they are because it might be talking about cabling in the CCI lab and they took cabling out of the CCI lab nine years ago so um, make sure that whatever exam it maps to that it's the exam you're studying for so not all free certification training and tutorials are accurate if, if you want to go that route so but just as a heads up you use the internet it, there's plenty of resources out there be resourceful you know uh, if you want to send me an email I can give you some pointers as to how to go find this stuff um, I'm not going to tell you in this video because obviously you know um, I'm Cisco certified and I don't want to give anything away but um, there's been, been many uh, people that have said you can find anything on the internet and you can you can find a lot of stuff on the internet so with that being said I'm going to cut it out for the tonight it's 1215 I have to get up early in the morning I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing